you know, today the, I would like to share uh, first topic of a gallium nitride power transition reliability, and then followed by deep learning uh, technique for early drug discovery. Uh, I'm Professor the Chen Xun Yuan uh, in electrical computer engineering. Uh, if you want to contact me, it's chenxun.yuan at ucf.edu. So the outline of my today's talk, uh, first is power transistor reliabilities. Uh, reliabilities is quite important for electronics application uh, beyond the performance, participation issues, and so on. So specifically, uh, I'm addressing time-dependent dielectric breakdown, TDDB, negative bias temperature instability, MBTI, and the ESD electrostatic discharge induced device degradation on power transistors such as high electron mobility transistor uh, issues. Uh, first part of my presentation. Second part of my presentation due to my new research interest in the past five years or so, we begin to use uh, AI uh, deep learning technique for uh, various applications, including uh, three-dimensional IC design, uh, drug discovery, uh, cybersecurity, and so on. But here I want to uh, take the opportunity to explain deep learning technique for early drug discovery, potentially for cancer uh, drug discovery and uh, 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 more impact for the society. Uh, it includes virtual screening, uh, rainbow strike uh, pipeline technique developed by my uh, PhD students and deep learning uh, simulation search result as well as experimental verifications. So, gallium <clears throat> uh, nitride high electron mobility, what's so called HAM, uh, critical for power electronics applications. Power electronics are used in many different domains, including battery, electrical cars. Uh, energy systems, uh, and so on. Uh, so the uh, typically uh, gallium nitride materials, if you look at the, the table here, traditional techniques, semiconductor techniques using silicon, uh, and then followed by gallium arsenide, uh, and then later on people move to silicon carbide and gallium nitride now, and the emerging materials such as gallium oxide uh, is the next line. Uh, for major R&D and applications. Why gallium nitride? Gallium nitride has wide band gap. Uh, it also has very high breakdown field and breakdown voltage. Uh, <clears throat> overall thermal conductivity is much better than silicon. And uh, also the, if we use the Huasoko figure mirrors, uh, gallium nitride figure mirror is much higher than silicon gallium oxide uh, uh, arsenide uh, uh, for uh, conventional application in the past. So gallium nitride power transistor used in power electronics such as power converter, they can increase power efficiency for high switch of uh, high frequency switching. Uh, because of high frequency switching, we can reduce size of inductor capacitors so for power electronic packaging, it will become much smaller uh, for the uh, enhanced uh, application. Also sustain high voltage, high temperature applications, as well as gallium nitride potentially can be integrated on silicon substrate and then integrated with silicon uh, digital analog RF application to form a unified platform for many different uh, applications. So uh, it potentially offer low cost solution to integrate with the silicon technologies. So <clears throat> uh, first reliability phenomenon for gallium nitride hang is dielectric breakdown. If you look at the, this is a power transistor, there's a gate, a source and drain. Under the gate, we have a passive vision silicon nitride layer and uh, uh, <clears throat> aluminum gallium nitride, gallium nitride layer formulator, two-dimensional electron gas. This is a formation of high-speed electronics for high-frequency applications. And uh, uh, the issue, the 
to present here is a gate leakage current subject to high voltage uh, gate stressing. So if we have a high gate voltage stressing, we're going to see gate leakage uh, uh, with some kind of random distribution. So this is experiment of many uh, hand devices uh, uh, measurement data uh, to show the statistic variations. So if we plot the failure rate in nature law format versus a breakdown time, uh, you can see some kind of uh, distribution uh, in terms of the, the shape of uh, this distribution, as well as a function of VG gate voltage. So large VG, smaller breakdown voltage. And by looking at the breakdown voltage, TBD versus uh, uh, subject biasing, VB, uh, VB is a subject biasing. The subject here, the device under measurement is on silicon, uh, way, uh, way for our silicon substrate. Uh, you can see uh, quickly the breakdown voltage versus VB show uh, a degradation, uh, which indicates some kind of intrinsic breakdown uh, versus extrinsic breakdown. It's interesting to know the breakdown voltage versus substrate bias when biasing is uh, positive, high voltage, then we see the increase of breakdown voltage due to trapping effect. This trapping effect through device simulation, we know uh, electron, uh, what's so called the donor type of trap, uh, uh, you know, uh, experience this kind of enhancement of breakdown voltage behaviors. Uh, this is a device simulation result to indicate uh, electron distribution at high gate voltage. Uh, gate outside negative bias temperature instability, which means uh, at a higher gate voltage uh, with a negative uh, bias and temperature is higher, it exhibit, uh, it shows instability. The so instability can be described by shifting of the turn on voltage or threshold voltage of a device. Uh, versus the stress time. So longer stress time, uh, larger uh, threshold voltage shift at a high temperature, such as a, a 30 degree versus a 10 degree, we see the increase of the, uh, this law. And uh, <clears throat> the phenomenon for uh, MBTI is due to accumulated holes at high gate voltage. This is low gate voltage, this is high gate voltage. At high gate voltage, we see the increase of uh, uh, accumulation holes or accepted uh, type of trapping in the buffer layer of gallium nitride devices. So this uh, uh, trapping effect uh, is quite critical because uh, <clears throat> uh, gallium nitride materials fabricated on silicon substrate show a lot of trap, which is quite different from conventional silicon technology such as uh, CMOS technology. Uh, the wafer is uniform, less trapping effect. The next one is a power transistor ESD behavior. Uh, ESD stress is, uh, uh, for instance, we measure the ESD event uh, in terms of IV characteristics, device under test, current, uh, and increase of voltage. We see holding voltage, uh, or the uh, triggering voltage, and then holding voltage. So this one, we basically see after ESD stress effect, we see the degradation versus a uh, number of uh, uh, TLP transmission line pulse. And the more pulses, the more ESD event, we see the increase of VTH, uh, uh, which is a threshold voltage, or the RTS on, which is a turn on resistance, uh, they both increases. Uh, during the recovering time, uh, they continue to increase unless we use a light to inject some kind of electrons uh, to uh, absorb the uh, ionized uh, hole, for example, then the recovery in fact uh, uh, comes into play. So <clears throat> based on this uh, uh, physical insights, we, uh, we look at the whole injection versus uh, uh, different uh, ESD stress voltage. We also use a simulation result to examine the physical insight, we understand there are a lot of whole uh, uh, trapping in the uh, what's so called filament formation. This filament formation due to impact ionized hole uh, will cause some kind of leaking path to the drain for the breakdown. 
Uh, due to the time limitation, let me move forward to the second topic quickly. Uh, so deep learning method for virtual screening. Basically, we try to study uh, you know, bioactivity of uh, molecules using graphic uh, uh, neural network, convolution neural network to represent some kind of chemical uh, chemical informatics, uh, uh, specifically we target for cancer understanding. So we'll have a graphic convolution neural network and uh, to do uh, deep learning uh, simulation. So this is pipeline for <clears throat> microRNA uh, uh, for early drug discovery. So basically we have a data collection, modeling, inhibition, molecular selection to the experiment. So this pipeline we introduce a lot of database, uh, uh, including Zinc database in the public domain. And then we did, we, we did a multi-task learning, uncertainty, prediction, task recommendation, and going through our pipeline, we, uh, we try to select this, a molecule out of 9 million candidates, and uh, we select the top candidate, potentially will interact with a microRNA21, to inhibit it is a, a biogenesis process. And eventually we find out result from simulation and then we do ACID experiment with our collaborator and the mouse experiment. So the next one basically show quickly, uh, we select about the top eight molecule out of uh, nine million potential candidate and the mouse experiment to show lung cancer uh, versus a number of time. So this is uh, uh, this is experiment uh, 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 using a molecule to inhibit it, microRNA twenty one. The lung cancer uh, development will be uh, much smaller. Uh, so the uh, if we do not have uh, if we do not have uh, uh, this uh, molecule selected, the control experiment should the growth of the uh, uh, lung cancer for the uh, for the mouse uh, under the experiment. So overall, the, <clears throat> uh, you know the uh, time is not enough, but I want to capture something quickly. Uh, we are operating under uh, what's so called Mid Center. Mid Center is the UCF, UVA, uh, as well as uh, uh, UF working together. We encourage people to work with us. This is just a reflection of my research. There are many people research together, uh, working with a mid center platform. Well, we finish uh, uh, phase one from 2014 to 2019. We are under phase two, 2020 to 2025. We are inviting people who have interest in semiconductor, sensor devices, uh, uh, photonics, uh, main circuit design, uh, architecture, and so on to working with us. So you can reach me. Uh, to talk about more detail because the presentation obviously doesn't have enough time to give you all the detail. So I want to thank uh, the fallen people who contribute uh, to my research and research collaboration before. And uh, due to time limitation, I want to give a few minutes for any potential question as well as uh, giving the other two speakers time to, to present their results. So let me stop here. Uh, welcome your comments and uh, questions.